Hello, I'm Professor Brian Boucher, and welcome back. In this video, we'll talk about liquidity ratios, both short-term and long-term liquidity ratios, and we'll apply them to the Plainview technology case. Let's get started. We can put the liquidity ratios that we're going to look at into three buckets, two short-term and one long-term. So the short-term liquidity ratio buckets, one of them is going to focus on current assets and current liabilities, basically asking the question of, do you have enough current assets to cover the current liabilities that you have coming up? Then we'll look at a bucket where we specifically look at whether you're going to have enough liquidity to cover interest costs. And then the long-term liquidity ratios are going to be more of the notion of riskiness. So is the firm too highly levered? Is there going to be a potential risk of bankruptcy down the road because they have so much debt relative to their equity investment? So the first bucket of short-term liquidity ratios, these are asking the question, does the company have enough cash coming in to cover its obligations to pay out cash? Ideally, these ratios would be over one that we're going to look at, but that's not always the case. Again, you want to really benchmark this to the industry and to the firm over time. First ratio is current ratio, which is current assets over current liabilities. So if current assets are going to turn into cash in the next period, and current liabilities are going to be obligations we have to pay in the next period, this is telling us, do we have enough assets that are going to turn into cash to cover all the cash obligations we're going to have to meet? Wow, so that's the first time in recording these five weeks worth of videos that the phones rang while recording. Either I've been incredibly lucky or I'm not very popular. A drawback to the current ratio is that not all of those current assets are going to turn into cash. As we've seen, some of those current assets are going to be things like prepaid expenses, prepaid rent. That's not going to turn into cash. That's not going to help us pay our liabilities. Some of these current assets are inventory, which is not that liquid because you have to go out and sell the inventory and then wait to collect on the receivables before it turns to cash. So a more conservative ratio would be the, what's called the quick ratio, which just says take cash plus accounts receivable and divide that by current liabilities. That's very conservative because cash and receivables are the most liquid assets we have, the ones that are most likely going to turn into cash. And so the question is, do we even have enough from those two categories to cover our obligations? This is one where it is really hard for it to be over one. Um, generally, this one is, is a little bit less than one. Then we have cash from operations to current liabilities. So we take cash from operations divided by average current liabilities. This one is more backward looking, saying in the period, did we generate enough cash from operations to cover our normal level of, op of current liabilities? If so, that's sort of a good sign going forward that we have enough liquidity. But here's what the ratios look like for Plainview technology. So why don't you pause the video and take a look at them? Okay, I, I guess there are no insights or questions from the virtual students, so I, I'll just go on. Uh, current ratio looks very healthy. It's trending upwards from 2.4 to 3.6. That 3.6 means that Plainview has three and a half times as much current assets as it does current liabilities. Now, as we talked about, the inventory and the prepaids are not necessarily going to turn into cash, so we have the quick ratio cash plus accounts receivable over current liabilities, also looking good, trending upward, and it's actually over one. So Plainview has enough in their cash and receivables to cover the current liabilities that are on their books at the end of 2011. When we look at the cash flow to current liabilities ratio, it's not as strong, not as positive of a story. We had the negative cash from operations in 2010. It rebounded a little bit in 2011. But as we talked about prior video, we do have some concerns about their volatile cash flow. And so I would say we're probably cautiously optimistic on Plainview's ability to meet their short-term liquidity needs, to be able to have enough cash coming in to cover the payments that they have to make out. Next, we're gonna look at interest coverage ratios. Here the question is, does the company have enough cash coming in to cover its interest obligations? Again, ideally, the ratio would be over one. You'd have enough cash coming in from your operations to cover what you owe to your banks. 
So one ratio we look at is, is interest coverage, which is operating income before depreciation divided by interest expense. So from an accrual accounting perspective, if we take your sales revenue, sub subtract your, your cost of goods sold, your SG&A, add back depreciation because that's always non-cash, is there enough profit that you're generating from operations to cover the interest expense? And then we can also do the same thing on a cash basis. So we can look at cash from operations, add back interest and taxes, and see if that's big enough to cover the cash the interest that we paid during the period. So do we have enough cash flow coming in after running the, the operations to cover the cash interest that we need to pay to our financers? So here are the ratios for Plainview. So why don't you go ahead and pause the video and take a look at these. Hmm, nothing again from the virtual students. Why don't we go and check on them? Professor, sorry we are studying for the exam. See you next week, your students. Okay, okay, I get the point. Uh, we're probably going on too long with these ratio uh, analysis videos. Uh, I'll take a couple more minutes and wrap it up, and then you'll have some time to study. Okay, so let's take a look at Plainview's ratios. Their interest coverage ratio is trending upward and seems very healthy. The company is generating enough income before depreciation to cover its interest expense with a lot of cushion. When we look at the cash interest coverage ratio, we see some of that volatility in there, which is driven by the volatility in cash from operations, which was negative in 2010. But other than that negative year, it looks like Plainview has been generating enough cash from operations to pay its cash interest obligations. Although again, we're a little concerned about the volatility. So overall, we're, we're cautiously optimistic about Plainview's ability to meet their short-term liquidity needs. Now let's look long-term. So these ratios are gonna tell us how is the company financing its growth and give us a measure of bankruptcy risk because the higher these leverage ratios are, the bigger the risk is that the company may have to default on its debt payments if its growth slows down at any point. First ratio we're going to look at is debt to equity, which is the total liabilities over shareholders' equity. So for each dollar of shareholders' equity, how much liabilities does the company have? Sometimes people use total assets in the denominator, especially if stockholders' equity is really small. This could be a very distorted ratio. And so total assets might give you a better picture. Another look at long-term leverage is to focus just on long-term debt. So total liabilities includes some current liabilities. It includes some pension stuff, deferred taxes. If you really want to focus on financing the operations, then a good ratio to look at is what's your total long-term debt, borrowing for the long-term, divided by the total shareholders' equity. And the last ratio is long-term debt to tangible assets. That's total long-term debt over total assets minus intangible assets. That's how you get tangible assets. We'll talk more about intangible assets next week, but these are assets that represent contractual rights rather than things you could go and sell on eBay. Uh, they're not physical assets. They're intangible, but we'll talk about them more next week. Anyway, what this ratio tells us is something about the company's debt capacity, because usually when you go to borrow money and you need to have it collateralized, you have to do that with tangible assets. So uh, accounts receivable inventory, uh, property plant equipment. And so this measure tells us how much additional borrowing the company could potentially do because it'll give a sense for whether they're completely collateralized in their debt in terms of their existing tangible assets. So let's look at the long-term debt ratios for Plainview. So why don't you take a couple seconds, pause the video, and look at what these ratios seem to be telling us. Okay, so let's take a look at what these ratios are telling us for plain view. Uh, in this case, actually, lower ratios are probably better than higher ratios because they would indicate less risk, more borrowing capacity. 
So Plainview's debt to equity has risen a little bit from 2009 to 2011, but it's still only 1.05, which means that for every dollar of equity investment, they have about a dollar of liabilities, which is a fairly low leverage ratio. Uh, if you look at financial institutions, they're as big as 17 to 20. Um, I would think more manufacturing companies, you would tend to see something more in three, two or threes. So this is a fairly low debt to equity ratio. So as they've been expanding the company, they've been issuing equity in about the same proportion that they've been raising new debt, keeping this ratio around one, even though it's gone up a little bit. Long-term debt to equity, again, it's trending upward, but it's still fairly low. And long-term debt to tangible assets as a measure of debt capacity, still very low. So the Plainview has a lot of assets that are not sort of claimed by long-term debt that's existing on their balance sheet, which means they have the capacity to go out and borrow more long-term debt because they've got the tangible assets there to support it. So the conclusions for Plainview from the equity ratios is that they're in a strong short-term cash position. Quick ratio is over one. They have high interest coverage ratios. We have a little bit concern about their volatility in their cash from operations, but other than that, it looks pretty good. Plainview's managed its leverage well through its expansion. It has small increases in debt to equity and in long-term debt to tangible asset ratios. But even though they've been going up, they're still not that high in absolute terms. So it looks like liquidity is not a major plain, not a major concern for Plainview. And that's a wrap for the Plainview technology case. So now we've looked at all of the major ratios that people tend to use. Uh, I'm going to do just one more little video where we look at the ratios for the 3M company, and then you can get to studying and taking your mid-course exam. I'll see you next time.